Okay. So thank you very much, Jans, for accepting this invite today. And thank you, everybody, for being here. This was my dream. I remember a small conversation Jans and I were having and um, on a lunch table, and we were eating Indian lunch on the last day, practically, that we said goodbye to each other. And uh, we were having samosas and salad and tikkas and all kinds of things. And we were searching for a bag, you know, a bag for my gong, my bag had, and I was getting obsessed. That was so interesting for me that I go back to the dining table where he did say, I want to come down to India. And uh, <clears throat> I heard him. But it didn't register that I could do this. And we could have him earlier than really coming to India. This is as good as coming to India right now, till he really comes to India. For me, it's a big day because I have never thought of me as someone who could play anything. I do not come from a house where I was formerly ever trained to play musical instruments. And yet everything for me changed three years back when Sujata Singhi was the first lady who came in my life who taught me sound music. During that session that she did, I cried and howled and I did stuff that was unbelievable. My life changed after that. My fears vanished. I was a different person. I got up from that bed feeling different. It was as if there was a soul change. The, the next sessions that happened for me, I saw my past lives. I saw myself sinking in the water. I saw myself asking for help and not getting it, which was and is a theme still running in my life today. I also saw myself in one of the music, sound music uh, sessions as a soldier from Germany who doesn't have an arm, doesn't have a leg and is sitting down. And I spoke in Shakespearean English or German. I don't know what language it was. It was recorded. And that was extremely fascinating for me that how could I talk like that? And I that happened that was most fascinating was there was a big bowl, um, very big one, in which I was made to stand and uh, the sound was played. And I danced in that bowl. Um, I danced. I don't know any Indian dance. And I danced and I danced as if I knew all the Indian dances. With blindfolds on, I danced for more than half an hour, 45 minutes, and it was recorded. So I know that there are, there are things about ourselves that we don't know. My fear for animals just disappeared. I have a, a golden retriever today. I, I can't sleep without her. And then I met Priyanka Patel. And she came into my life. And, and it was just such a beautiful journey because I was coming to Barcelona to play. And she guided me so beautifully. She's so delicate with her stuff. So two teachers taught me entirely different stuff. Two teachers brought about like two different um, ideas about what sound is all about. But my soul wasn't feeling quenched and I felt as if it had to search for more. Then I searched for Chintan. He was there in my journey. And then I met Jans. He changed the complete ideology for me what sound is all about. Sound, he said, is sound is everywhere, Anu. What you need to hear in the sound is music. If the sound can be noise, sound can be um, music, sound can be entertainment, sound can be love, sound can be nature. When we played with him the whole night, Arti was there. That night, I cannot forget. Because that night was the first time I actually understood that you could create patterns with sound. You didn't need to be loud. You didn't need to be 
you just had to be very delicate, very soft, very, very connected. I still haven't started teaching sound and I will, but the opportunities that have opened up for me ever since I have got sound in my life are amazing. Guys, sound is something that changes your life forever. And you are never the same person again. It's like falling in love with yourself. Thank you, Jans, and thank you, everybody, for bringing such beautiful love in my life. Thank you, Jans, for today accepting my invite. I am in deep gratitude and humbled by the universe of how many beautiful people I have in my life, and yet for ages I kept saying, I don't have friends. I will never say that again. Today is the 61 session. We crossed 60 sessions. Today is the 61 session. And in 61 sessions, I have been supported by my friends. If I didn't have friends, how would this be possible? If the universe was not there on my side, how was this possible? Because I've never made it happen. It's happening. Thank you, Jans, for being here. Over to you. Thank you. <sighs> you are words made me overwhelmed and i am feel like i want to cry a little bit because i'm so happy to hear you um can you hear my uh, my voice is the, is the is the sound clear everybody thumbs up okay thank you very much glass klar glass klar <laughs> yes. so and when you mentioned the time we met all the memories came back and it is like it happened yesterday and um well at that time we didn't think of how the world would change no and we are in a complete different situation and still we are somehow i feel this is the time that we have trained for This is the time why we started an education to look out for something else that would support our life. And so now I'm very happy that you gave me the chance to speak to your friends and also take the feeling of Hamburg, like spread it around uh, and, and like, let's get connected. It's beautiful. And so when I was starting preparing, I was very nervous. I think even like there's a time difference, like we have here late afternoon, very late afternoon. It's not that much of a difference. I don't know, but this morning I was so confused and I even was calling, Anu, am I on? What's <laughs> going on? She said, no, relax, it's not yet. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was preparing for today and questioning myself, so what is it that I'm going to say? So I, uh, what is it that you are, uh, that I can, Yes, share, you are sharing your valuable time. And so, we, yes, we want something to come out from this, right? We want to get something from it. So, can I say what we want to get out of this? Yes, please. You remember uh, the photograph that was taken in that temple? And there was a green orb right there. Yes. Next to your photograph and where I was standing. And that was very interesting. What I want from this is just connections. Beautiful connections to last forever. Because my friends today and this spiritual family, the Meta family means more to me than the family I was born into. I have the family I was born into. They will always be there with me. But you know what? To form connections every day and to connect with people at soul level, I'm very lucky to have had the opportunity to do that. And if you can only connect us today with love, that's, that's all the expectations. <laughs> that's a lot. Well, yeah, well mm. so <sighs> you spoke very beautifully. You spoke about sound, what uh, sound did for you and, and how sound opened up your, your, let's say, sense for reality. And uh, what, what I would like to do, I would like to start, I would like to kindly invite you to follow me remembering some path stones in my well in my biography because i believe that everything we do that comes from our personal biography life puts us in a certain spot and then we have to go on from there and on the one hand there's a perfect 
universe or let's say a multiverse and on the other opposite it is us and somehow we have all different stories how we get along with life and 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 how what's our guidelines and so when i was young um somehow uh, i got into problems quite fast so when i was young i didn't understand at all the problems that i had i had lots of problems and later on later on all the years i came across certain ideas concepts and these ideas or processes they led to certain premises and i like the word premise very much do you all have an idea of the word what a premise is guys you can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself put your hand up and you can answer him would you like to put your hand up on the on the zoom so i can see you and unmute you so just just some ideas what what a premise is for you so that we are speaking on the same path okay so premise is like a story that it might happen but might not happen oh okay it's good that we speak it is completely the opposite a premise is something that we presume that it's going to happen for sure like we have the premise that tomorrow morning the sun is going to rise we all have this premise right if you do we have this premise raise your arm yeah of course right so a premise is something that we believe we can be absolutely sure that this is reality so okay if this is a, a premise a premise it's a truth that we something that we pretend we think it's a truth okay so so what happened is when i was little uh, I say 11 years old is little. I left my, I had to leave my home place. My home place was West Africa, Liberia. My father was a, man, a mining engineer and, and, uh, yes, and there was no school uh, after a certain year. So I had to go back to Germany and I went on my own. I went to a boarding school. So, and later on, I realized because I spent my early lives in the West African rainforest, my mind went a complete different process as if I would have lived in Germany. Uh, obvious, right? <laughs> so, when I, when I got to Germany to the boarding school, like uh, people like the, 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 the teachers, they were like, they, asked, they were like asking to do me certain things. And I would just say, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, then they would ask, why, why are you not going to do it? And I would say something like, it doesn't make sense to me. And then they would say, but you have to do it because uh, it's, we are the teachers and this is the truth. And I was keeping up and saying, no, you believe it's a truth. I feel it differently. And the more I was insisting on my uh, truth or on my way feeling things differently, the, the more problems I got. And, and I will not tell you all about this, but it was tremendous. And it was at that time that I, uh, well, well, let's say my father was a good mining engineer for sure, but he was not very good in engineering his family uh, for many reasons. And I was questioning myself about all these experiences. And even by that time, I realized that we have different parts in our life happening at the same time. We have thinking concepts and we have emotional concepts and they're happening at the same time but they can struggle with each other and so there was the question am i going with my thoughts my mental concept my thinkings my intellect or do i go with my emotional part and it was a situation where it was it had to be like either or particularly when I wanted to get along as a young student, your purpose of life is not 
uh, getting into problems with everybody. I wanted to be a good student, but um, it, it, was, it was very difficult, actually impossible. So when I was in this situation and I had to be there, there was no way for me to get out of it. I had to go from all, uh, all the way from 11 to 18, 19 years. I was like trapped in this boarding school and uh, well, so what to do? And then what happened after, yeah, two or three years I was there, my focus uh, went to music. I started to play music. But the way I played the music was somehow different. Like I didn't uh, learn songs or when, when I, I went to play, I wanted to go to the musical teacher. And after the first hour, I decided, no, I cannot be with this musical teacher because he's the same, were very strange as the others uh, are, were strange. So I had no one to teach me music. I had to do it myself. So, and then what happened is that I had my, um, at that time I had my guitar. Well, let me have a guitar here. So, so now it's not a guitar, this is a ukulele. So there was this little Jens, very much stressed from all these terrible teachers. And then he found when he had a guitar and just played the guitar, not a song, but just anything, I could be myself. The, I could, and not only I could be with myself, I was happy. And I had a, uh, and I realized, maybe not consciously, I just did it, that when I play music, I can take myself of the world around me and live my life. So this was somehow a good news. But the idea was, uh, the effect was that the teachers, they got even more angry because when they wanted to speak to me, I wouldn't speak to them. I were playing guitar, you know, <laughs> and when I was, when they were playing. So it was, it was even getting worse. And then I switched my way of playing guitar. Uh, I became a rock punk musician. So because with the music, I used the music as an aggressive expression, as an aggressive resonance to, to, you know, to, to, to not only to, to prevent myself, but even to attack. And so when I was 18, 19, oh my Lord, I was very, very, very good in attacking with music. I was so good in that, that uh, right after I came out of school, I, I got like a record deal you know, I, I became a professional punk rock musician. And it was very good and very powerful and I liked it very much. But at the same time, there were things that were in my, um, in my, let's say, in my vision or in my imagination, some things that I didn't really like. And what I didn't, and I didn't really like the aggressive parts and the destruction because with my father being a mining engineer, and I mentioned briefly, he was very good doing his mining stuff, but with his family engineering, he was not so good because he was very, very, very aggressive as well. So I find myself, found myself in a way dealing with all this aggression inside myself. And then I cannot go into, I just want to go into the basic things. And then one day, something really funny happened. This is very personal. And I'm sharing something that, well, uh, now is it's on Zoom, it's, it's, it's all over, right? Anybody can hear, <laughs> not the private space of a workshop. But, um, well, it's, but it's true, it's happened, it happened exactly like that. So I can, I can speak about it and I can stand for it. So what happened is that one day on the concert, it was as part of myself opened up and I had, the impression that someone from outer space was communicating with me. And it has nothing to do with psychedelic drugs or whatever, I swear, it was just me, myself and the music. And 
somebody was talking to me. And I found that very strange and was very new, but it was very impressive. And I took it very serious. And after that concert, my life changed. And I said, well, I want to know about these options. I want to know about if this is reality, that just one from one second to another, somebody who, who you cannot see him, but he can talk to you. What is, this is, was so beyond anything that I you know, was taught how life is. And if I knew one thing till then, then it was that the reality setup, like this, the, the teachers, the society was presenting to me that I said, your reality setup is not enough to, uh, to, to serve people's human's interest. You have overall setup and your setup is very limited. It's even bad, it's very destructive. And then they were saying, no, it's a good setup. And I was saying, no, it's not a good setup. Many, many things are missing in your setup. And then I wanted to study music. And then I went to the university for music. And then I saw friends who were so much more talented than I was. I wasn't really talented, but somehow, but not as my talented friends are. And when the talented friends got to the university, they, are, they lost their musical talents. They lost their skill. Not that they developed skills, but they lost something very, very important that was part of their musical personality that I enjoyed before when I was listening to them. Then so I was questioning myself, first of all, what happened to them? What got lost? What part of a personality structure, what is it that got lost? Why did it go uh, away. But uh, besides this, I decided, no, I will not go to musical university. Uh, this is not good for me. I was trying to go to a, uh, a language. I wanted to study Arabic language because they have so, so many words. They have over 3 million active words they are using in their daily language. I loved words. I loved, I love communication. I think the purpose to live is to communicate. So, and I said, okay, let's, if the Arabic language has that many words, then I want to study it. But I, after 11 minutes, I also went this study and I realized, no, this university is nothing, to, nothing for me. And I have to stay completely with myself. So, and then I had this vision, like a dream, more than one time. I had voices coming back more than one time and like guiding me, inspiring me. And, and what we see in the back right here, this, this gong instrument became my main instrument. So I decided to become a gong musician. There was not such thing like a gong musician at that time. Some people played it in jazz. Some people had in some therapeutic uh, environments, they were using it, but very, very uh, rarely. And as well, like, um, well, there was no concept for using how to use a gong in a way according to its potential. So I started, I made a center, it's called Klankhaus. I did it in Hamburg in 1984. And uh, people came. And then I had like, um, and well, I did play music before, so I would present the gongs with some kind of, percussive musical skills, but not playing songs, not playing or anything particular, just playing. And then what happened, people reported, gave me their feedback. So people would say, or in the gong meditation, I was calling it gong meditation, in the gong meditation, I felt so relaxed. So the next day, somebody would come, if I come to the gong meditation, what is going to happen? What can I expect? And I would say, well, probably it's relaxing. And so more people came and came and I got a lot, a lot of feedback and just reporting the feedback, what people experienced in the gong meditation made me look like an experienced gong practitioner. And, um, and, I, well, and after two or, um, um, 
and and after two years, well, I I, I had a lot of um, well, experience well together, and then I was the first time for me to come off my center, and I was invited to perform for a Indian guru. His name is Yogi Bhajan, and he's 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 very popular because he created the 3HO Kundalini Society, and he was very very popular in Hamburg, and. Um, well, and there is an amazing video from that moment. I put it on YouTube, right? And if you want to see it, it's, it's, uh, you just check for my name in YouTube and you will see it there. And it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a disaster. It's a shock. It's, it's, it is as shocking as the teachers that were trying to, you know, tell me things that were obviously stupid to be reality. So what happened to me is that I thought I was doing good, developing my talent, my vision, and over sudden, from one second to another, there was this uh, trauma again, being confronted with aggression, but on a much higher level. So by that, I realized that it's part of our evolutionary setup that our society, different societies, wherever in the world they are, uh, let's say, located. I think for all the societies in the last thousands of years, for, for sure last 2000 years, are mainly ruled with aggression. They are ruled by warfare industries. They are... Um, they are ruled from male patriotic behaving, ignorant, da, 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 da. So it's a difficult world we live in. It's a very complex world that we live in. And I realized in order to get access to, or I wasn't intending to get access, but just simply to understand it, it is not one thought that makes you understanding the world. It's a, it's, it's a process within the flow of time. So, and for me, the flow of time was, and I will make a little skip in a different universe. So when, because when I started playing gongs and gong music and gong meditation and making up my mind, why is it that sounds are considered as being relaxing or why can sounds trigger memories? Why sounds can trigger visions? Why is that? How is that possible? So, of course, this is not one answer to this question. There is many, 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 uh, not answers, but many stories. So, and at that time, it was the early 80s. So I'm born 1960 and, and I became a professional sound practitioner 1984. So I was 24 when I, when I started being a professional sound activist. So, and in Germany, it was the beginning of the new age. This was the new age. I have a, I consider this as a positive term. It was like the echo or a parallel world of the hippie movement. And it was kind of a first time that people like in public or people beyond these religious spaces, like, like everyday people start to make up their mind, like what is the purpose of the life? Uh, what can I do to improve my personal life? And in the path of the evolution, this was completely new, never ever before. Maybe some few people, but in public. And remember, so 1960, this was like, like about a, a 12 years after the world war ended. So being in Germany, even if the world war now is three, four generation, you still feel and you still see the effects. If you have a world war like falling upon one nation, it's a super disaster. It's terrible. It's, and even that we are still live in a time where if we were had to count the, the wars that are happening in this moment, my God, 
what it is, is, is it is it is it didn't really get better so so it is like we are in a very confusing situation with lots of wars lots of suffering people lots of disasters complications and so now how do you want to position yourself in this global situation of complex universes like challenging you and even today like like we we are sitting inside it's not, now it's a different kind of war like and that that is happening well it's not really a war it's a situation but however the situation is there is not really something that we can do about it on the overall level all we can do is sit in our house and think what is it that we can do now how can we be with ourselves so when i remembered what i did in the time when i was in the boarding school and i was like i had this overwhelming attacks from all these teachers and people want me to do things and i was lucky i had the guitar coming to me so i hope that all of you that you are using this time of the current time to play with any instrument at all so please i kindly and and just give me an idea who of you is playing music in these days in the last four or five weeks who is playing music yes wonderful i, I see many hands going up let me see the other ones please keep on holding up your hands oh no no movies here okay so some of you are doing it so and then of course you can um there's no doubt that when you are playing music that you are able to build up your personal vibrational field that is really yours you agree to that whatever music it is right and and, and you don't have to be professional you don't have to be perfect according to expectation you just have to do it am i right mm -hmm. okay so now let's go back in the 1980s and it was a so so interesting time because everything was so new and in like in germany it was the beginning of the commercial transformation industries that i would call it. and in germany well we are the country we lost the wars we were the bad ones right <laughs> so, and yeah and they um so it was the uh, the cultural content that we got came from anglo-american parts of the world and as the new age basically comes from america and the way the american marketing concept set up any content well if you come from a uh, let's say german holistic background it's very suspicious like you know marketing should not top the series of content do you know what i mean like if you make marketing you promote things and you want somebody to buy your cars and your class and then the promotion and the marketing becomes even more important than the content this was my impression when i see a lot of commercial new age industries or concepts are we on the same boat or is anybody disagreeing completely no, no one disagrees okay good for me <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> so and so when i started it was operation on many different levels at the same time so first of all it was me starting to play gong music and sound music then it was me like dealing with the over taking let's say yeah the reality of the society because at that time we we did we were protesting for you know it was it was after vietnam for but there were so many things you could go demonstrate on the street like every weekend there was a reason and then one day something very interesting happened and this happened you please keep in mind that my inspiration came from the voices that came in from time to time 
okay? And these voices, they did not require that I now, I should, let's say, worship them or put any pictures of them to the wall or light a candle. It was not like that. It was, a, it was completely different. Sometimes they were there or still are there and it was very, very fair. So, but through this inspiration, one day I realized if I put up my energy against something, I am of the same quality energy, I'm the same energy of the thing I don't like. If I make myself being a polarity, being the other side of the white, yeah, then the black and say, you are black, you are terrible, you are a disaster. And then I will be the partner of this, even if it's a disaster. So, and then I realized that I had to make a decision, not taking so much care about the bad stuff anymore. It was very difficult for me because I lived being a punk. In the morning, I wake up and I just read the newspapers to be sure what bad things everybody was doing and then make a plan what to do. And like I was, I was mad. I was obsessed by being in resistance and, you know, fighting back. And, and I was, yeah, I was obsessed by that. So then I had to decide to let go of seeing somebody else as an enemy. And it was quite difficult, but what made it easy that I realized the writings of a person called Jean Gebser. And Jean Gebser, so maybe later on we would sure have some, some if you ask Anu, there are some English uh, translations on that. We have PDFs and some links on that. So Jean Gebser was the guy, he was a mate of C.G. Jung. And I'm very sure that everybody who is into psychology is completely aware of the importance of the personality of C.G. Jung, right? Yeah? Oh, I see everybody's shaking it. Very good. Okay. So, and... Um, that, and that's, guy, that's our thumbs up. That's our thumbs up. <laughs> okay. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and he was very important, very important to bring a more diversified pictures than the concept of the archetypes that we are not complex energy setups and we don't have only one part being us. We have many parts and they are, and how they are, uh, no, how we could, or at least exact that we have different parts. So however, Guy Jean Gebser, he was more looking on the process of the cultures and he was describing that the evolution in the collective consciousness is actually happening and for me this was amazing good news because i believed till that point nature is good and people humans are stupid you know the universe is fantastic but if but not humans and this is a very primitive way but it, i was obsessed by that right and and then I said, no, it is all in the process. And this process happens even on different levels on the same time. Because Jean Gebser, he was giving a kind of structure. He speak about the archetypal and the magic and the mythology and the integral. So at the spear front, at the actual, the contemporary spot of our evolution, we have the need for an integral uh, understanding of the world. And when I was able to get myself out of the polarity struggle and put myself on a, let's say, on a meta level, it, it was, I, I had the feeling or I realized I, I, I made this jump in this integral uh, consciousness. Of course, there are times when I fall back, of course, you know, as, as I, am, I am not perfect at all. But um, However, so I was very happy and very thankful. And because this guy, Jean Gebser, he, uh, he was the one, he founded the name Integral, Integral View or in, in, Integral Standpoint, Integral Evolution. So I picked the name Integral and called the style of sound work. I was doing Integral sound work. Okay? So, and the... Now the integral sound work and the integral sound work is something new. It's not 
written. The script is not done yet. It's still in the process because we are still in the process to pick up many, many different details and let them become new premises of how we look at reality or how we can open up. Because I have some really, 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 I have some really bad news for you. I have some terrible bad news for you. You don't want to know? Yeah, yes, well, terrible news. Anu, your, your microphone is off. So sometimes I like to hear your voice. It makes me more confident. <laughs> yeah, so give me some support. So yeah. the you have bad, all my support right now. Yeah, so, so what is the bad news? Uh, the bad news is that you to contemporary neuroscientists, we are just aware about 3% of reality, right? And the problem is that most people think that their 3% is like 100%. <laughs> so you can imagine all these problems from people just knowing very, very little view and I, I have some, you know, some pictures if I, you know, just, just imagine 3% is like, 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 like nothing, right? It's like, it's like nothing. So the best is to completely surrender and pretend and feel that you know nothing at all. So, okay. So this is a very, 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 very good um, uh, position to be in. Because when you integrate this letting go of the idea that you know anything, then for a little moment, you will empty yourself from kind of expectation or conditions. Of course, it's a bioenergetical process and it's, we are supposed to practice it as anything that we want to progress. We, we need to practice and so now is the first time that i will refer to the title of these let's say lecture talk it's 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 a bit you know like intuitive because it's so complex that i can't really tell how i'm drifting through these uh, 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 complex uh, reality so sound toros what's the purpose how does it get together. So let me jump back. So it was in my 80s. I was starting with my clank house. I didn't know about Taurus meditation at that time at all. I was looking what other people are doing. If it was, it would be inspiring. Most of things were not so inspiring. So I was very much with myself. And then, well, another additional game changer for me happened in real life. And it was the time when it was about even the same time when I met Hans Kusto. Whoever of you came across the word Hans Kusto? If you, if you did, you raise your hand. If you know who is Hans Kusto, yes, uh, Artie and Bieber, you have been in my class. You're supposed to, Alex, of course. Okay, thank you very much. Who of you came across is aware of the name Pythagoras, Pythagoras, Pythagoras? They all the hands are going up, exactly, for a reason. Because Pythagoras, uh, we presume he's a good guy, right? He is, um, he's yeah. known everywhere still today because his inventions of creating a geometric, mathematic, and harmonic, harmonic is so essential till today. And it's, it's, uh, it has value for a right. So, and now historical personalities are saying researchers that Hans Kusto is of same importance than Pythagoras, Pythagoras, because he showed us the way how to find from looking at the movements at the planets, how to calculate frequencies from that. So it's the first time in the evolution of um, 
of mankind that we are consciously aware of the order frequencies of natures of nature there has been some intuitive wisdom about that before and the um the talk about the cosmic octave that is the name of his discipline hans kusto and the cosmic octave the science of the order frequencies of nature this is probably the only thing that i would like to mention in this talk i just want to figure it out that this is a important aspect of integral sound work um Jans, Dr. Kwesi wants to ask you a question. Oh, yes, please. Oh, no, I just raised my hand. That was all. I didn't want to ask any question. I'm just oh. um, listening uh, and being fascinated. So just continue. Mm. Okay, so we will surely have a, uh, have, have a time for some questions uh, uh, after the talk. And Anu will tell me, well, when we are, let's say, done, when we can't do any more. Um, it's a... It's a a little bit complex lecture talk for me because I really want to get all the way around it, okay? And so, uh, so I'm still back in the 80s. I'm still back uh, uh, in the situation where the transformation industries was coming up and it was Hans Kusto uh, uh, coming up. And so this is where a whole multi-level experience started for me. And this experience actually is on, still going on today and I'm, I mean, I'm, if I'm not in quarantine, I'm traveling around the world and teaching the details on integral sound work. But let's become practical. So I, I really would like you to get something out of it practically. So when, this, uh, when all this started, um, I realized that due to the work of Jean Gebser, that all the cultural artifacts we have, they are reflecting the spirit of their time. Right now, uh, um, uh, if it's, if it's uh, Dr. Kwesi, or is, is, I mentioned he's from Ghana. Yes, Ghana. he's from Ghana. I have been in Liberia, I have been in Ghana, I have been in Kumasi actually, and I met Ashanti people. But we have to go a little bit further east to find the Yoruba people. And the Yoruba people in the time of the slavery, when they were taken to America, they actually, you can say, they made a huge impact on the music of the world by getting tribal Yoruba beats to, let's say, middle America and spreading it from there in all kinds of music. And not only the blues came from that and the rock and all, the, and of course the reggae and, and many of the, the Latin parts influenced Latin music. So it's a huge impact that came from Africa and it's still big today, of course. So, but whenever we listen, for example, to blues, my first music was, I played blues, right? I had so much to, <laughs> to stay. When you play blues, you're suffering. That's a purpose for blues. So, so, but all the music, music forms were reflecting spirit of the time at a certain moment, okay? And as the evolution goes on, as the circumstances are changing, there was always new music coming up. And this new music is reflecting the spirit or the zeitgeist of this actual moment in the human history. So now the blues has been invented, cannot be invented again. What, what we have, we have, like pop music, the invention of pop music. Hamburg, the Beatles, was very important part because with the pop music, people were allowed officially to have emotions, right? Before that, it was not, it was not possible to really be emotional. And this is another one of the big game changer that many people realized that the emotional setup is a organic part of any human being. And we are all supposed to take care of our emotional setup because if we don't do that, we will become sick or we might die or we cause problems for other people. It's very important to realize that we are emotional. Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. So now 
we have a very confused situation. We have our emotion and whatever we get, we have so much emotion that it's almost difficult to, 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 to deal with it. How can we be emotional? Now, how do we find an appropriate partner for our emotions? Or we go to the football or we go yeah, to a pop star or we, we, we do some Bollywood movies, right? They are very emotional. Right. And, and, I, and I was when I, I when I go out, I always wait for 100 people to come and dance and have this fun. <laughs> it never happens. Only a Bollywood movie. Right. Beautiful. Very emotional. OK, so but my point is that. Even Bollywood music, as beautiful as it is, it's a repetition of an image that's now out for quite a time. So and there, there might be changes in some aspects or the sound design or the instruments, but it's still Bollywood music, right? And if you take a rock star, it's still rock music. If you take a pop, it's still pop music. So what is the, so is there any new music coming out these days? And yes, this is a good news. So the bad news is we only have 3%, right? It's a kind of bad news, okay? So kindly invite you to, don't take yourself too serious. And, um, and they are, so I'm sorry for that. And they are, the good news is that we have a new music going on these days. And this new music is called sound music. It's a complete new genre. It hasn't been out there before. And it's not just like a variation of jazz or a variation of world music, or it's a complete new music. It's music where everyone is completely invited and allowed to be yourself as much as yourself can be yourself in a certain way. And this is, it is, let's say, it is not a encounter, um, encounter performance art. So, for example, if you are set setup here and you feel like you just want to jump in and make a lot of excitement, right? This is probably... Um, Mm, this is not they are well at least not with my instruments okay <laughs> they are very 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 sensitive because sound music instruments and particular when they are combined with the knowledge of the cosmic octave when they have the frequencies of the planets being their fundamental resonance so you can really present the different archetypes according to your zodiac or according to your family constellation or according to you know suggestion whatever you have so so this sound music is intuitive music it comes from the moment and it only will be in this moment and 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 you cannot even write it down probably you could but it doesn't really make sense what you can you can do a recording or you can even today zoom it and set up a microphone with a sound card but it, this is not important important is that playing sound music allows you to be yourself fully and you have a time with yourself where you are in peace with yourself because you see the resonances and even if it's something that you don't really like uh, it makes it possible for you to uh, realize or to accept that it's part of you. We had this many times with the gong meditation. The gong, the symphonic gong, is a very powerful instrument because it, it provides all possible frequencies at the same time. And our consciousness just picks up like a profile of these frequencies and creates the picture according to our conditioned mind setup. And as the vibrations are going on, and there are much, much more frequencies, so it is what happens is that we become part of the flow, and in this flow, we are opening up ourselves, and we see part of our, yes, let's say, reality that's beyond our conditions. Does it make sense what I'm saying? Yes, mm. it does. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. So now let's let's speak me let's speak about some um, uh, so how can we it, it it is not well it has happened to a certain extent by itself automatically but uh, 
what is it that we can do to support this process of a sound music? And uh, like the sound music, the first official instrument, the gong is the, is the, is the most powerful instrument, but the major instrument for sound music comes from yeah. <laughs> the bowl. The bowl, right? So the singing bowl is the first instrument of this new sound music. And I will not go into all these let's say confusing information about the original purpose and the history on that. But the premise in integral sound work is that all these uh, ideas about a singing bowl being a key instrument in holistic sound music, it's a very contemporary idea. Like, like 100 years before, nobody spoke about sound healing. Probably nobody was even using the word like uh, were healing at all so it's a contemporary style so and when we want to have the benefit of a singing bowl and now who of you is there anybody well i was expecting that now get your singing balls out show me your singing bowls <laughs> but this was maybe not it's not maybe not okay. fair oh we have some there karuna has a wonderful well if you have some yeah pick it up pick it up then you make me really happy if you have a singing singing bowl somewhere this is amazing this i was dreaming about this yeah, i was wish I, I was wishing i had them right here <laughs> i was wishing that it could happen getting okay. them getting them two minutes yes wonderful yes you go all get your singing bowl and then we have a fantastic um sound music um together all right can you hear a bell? Okay. So, okay, please, please wait a minute. Fantastic. Very well. We will have a we will have a beautiful meditation together. But allow me to to put to point out the if you have a rattle, if you have anything that makes sounds, even if you have a pot, a pan, you know anything or a bell, anything that has a sound, you're invited to take it. Bino, what's about you? I'm sure you have something. <laughs> yeah. This would be nice if it would, it would be, if it would be a trick. Now, if you make a video trick, like Artie has a picture of Bino, and you give out and hand it over to the picture of Bino. <laughs> okay, just wait a moment, please. Wait a moment. Just get yourself ready. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so, so now we have a little, um, a, a little moment in between. So uh, in, the, in the integral uh, sound, so, so it's very, it's all about what is the process, what is the perspective of becoming more, a more sensitive, a more resonating personality. It is not about believing anything. It is about practicing your bioenergetical setup. And in order to practice your bioenergetical setup, the most, most important thing or the only thing is that you turn your awareness towards your breathing wave. The breathing, the cycle of the breathing is the most, most important thing at all. So now see what Bina came up with? Woo, a ukulele, that's also cool. Wonderful, I like it's green, that's great. It works on any instrument at all. So. So now, um, we, um, okay, I want to, before I get into it, I want to add in the title of this lecture talk. It's about the Taurus meditation. And uh, a Taurus, just, I want to just remind you, let me, let me to see what my uh, the picture is. So, I get out of the way. So, what? So, see this? Right? So, this is a torus form. So, a torus, before, not only we have a 3% limited mind, 
we also have a lot of premises they are not up to date anymore but they are triggering our mind a lot for example when we have when we hear about a wave we have the sinus wave like this is the wave that we have in our mind when we think about a wave so what i suggest is to replace this concept of a wave and seeing the wave as a pulsating uh, uh, field. So the wave is not like this, but this is a wave. And then it comes back again. So, and now what we do is when we have this like, okay, because when I was, I started in 84 and not, I have not only seen Yogi Bhajan and the Kundalini people, I have seen many, 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 many projects. And it was my profession being an agency of doing marketing for them. And then I realized that many of these concepts are historically interesting, but they don't really have a contemporary value because they're not implementing the new realizations of a multidimensional reality that a multidimensional reality requires. If we live in a multidimensional world, we cannot keep up with our thinkings that are rooted 2000 years ago and can be considered as a two dimensional uh, thinking, right? And we are far beyond that. So how do we open up? So the most in the integral sound uh, uh, concept, it is not only the ears that are hearing, but it is all of our body is part of the hearing process. This is what we can understand. And if we think the body is our hearing instrument, where is the force front? Where is the spear front? Where is the in front of our, uh, let's say, hearing organ? Where is our, where, what's the most important part when we look at a hearing process in terms hearing uh, uh, equals feeling? It's the fingers, the fingertips. The tips of the finger, this is the most important part to start any holistic hearing feeling process. So what is that you can say at the same time we are 3% limited personalities and our fingers are expressing it. We are not using them. So we are supposed, whenever we go out the house, we're supposed to be, hello, how you doing? I feel you, do you feel me? We should be more interacting. Because when we are interacting, we have so, we're picking up so much more information, bringing them into our um, system, process them and put them out. Okay, so this is, uh, be, being more sensitive means equals getting more to life. So now we have this idea that it's and and it's reality this is not esoteric fantasy it's a, it's it's a, a, it's a, a, a reality so you have all this sparkling uh, energy from your fingers so whenever you change your fingers you put them to each other then you can feel it right and you open up and it feels different and then you close them again and even by doing this so now we inhale we open up and we exhale we exhale with our mouth and when we exhale we don't be like boring this is boring people we exhale we want to get it out you want to get all this whatever it is you want to get it out some you are getting it out okay and now when it's all out then you have the impact and then and then in your imagination, and now it's very important to coordinate your imagination, like you're opening up and before they were electrically connected and now you are opening up to the cosmos. And now the slower you do it, the more you will feel that you have electricity running into your fingers and you want to allow this electricity not only in your fingers but to integrate this in your all of your body in your electrical system right so now so we're in okay so so now what we do is now we are starting we are creating 
the tourist feel like in the way we see it in the back of my uh, of, of my background and so now if we have imagination of ourselves being besides beyond our body being electrical and not just electrical but being super electrical so when you realize this this electrical field is hundreds of meters in every direction that's what space science tell us so we get an idea of how uh, sensitive any human personality is we are all super beings electrical cosmic super beings with multiversal resonances but we just have to take it and of course the three limited three percent mind don't get it so we have to get away of this and we say okay and of course our when we pick up the fingers and we started where is the most electrical point in ourself it's here it's in our heart right so so you when you start this movement here you take it from here and and it might be that even uh, because we all want to be so perfect it might be that we are not really able organically to open up all the way it might take some practice we just do it the way that it feels right okay so okay th and this is this is the torus wave there are some uh, uh, little more kind of exercise but just do it intuitively you just do it and the ideas you use your fingers and i suggest not go for the dramatic form you know go for the little time little steps are have much much more value than 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 than, than big attempts the big attempts come by the b so so open up like this and inhale with the nose and and when you have your inhaling wave you should feel it in your facial muscles because that's the next part we need the fingers to get the electricity in our body and then we take the electricity inside ourselves and we take it to the faces and we take our face off the grid of being this boring face you know every inhale that you do gives you a chance to be multiversal at life to make this life being your life at least in your body whatever happens outside okay and now this process if later on i'm sure we will have some little music and this is what you do this is let's say the way you start your dance in sound music and and you don't do it in order that it looks beautiful you don't have to you know go up with a certain pattern but but you are um you are simply yourself you allow your intuitive emotional flowing self to happen and it's scientifically proved that for some times a day you should you're supposed to do things that no make no official sense okay so 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 you can do or it doesn't make official sense and just happily in the flow unfolding my my torus or you can also do with your partner of course i have a nice picture for that okay so now now the thing is we, we are combining this i'm running uh, through different aspects of this concept okay so now what it has to do with the sound music so the sound music is you imagine this doing and then any sound music instrument the right moment to play it is and when your breathing cycle gets to a reverse point so you exhale and then the inhale start so this would be a good point and then the singing bowl is that are you can see it like it meets together well let me put take me away this thing here so it's more clear so um getting of the hint in it okay so okay this instrument so um because what I see a lot of time is that people use your their right hand and they would bang with the right hand on the on the on the on the singing bowl. This is not the way it works. It's not the way it works at all. So so this is the way to hold it. You're not controlling it. Sound music is about not really controlling, it's about allowing things to happen. And then 
what I see a lot of time is, see, the way I hold it. When you do it like this, you create a block here. You want the energy, the vibrations all as well to travel inside your body. When you do it like this, it impossibly can travel in your body. It's not possible. You do it like this, then it can travel, or you do it like this, then it is traveling. Okay, this is something I really, really recommend you to try out yourself, but this is a basic. So, and when we have base, so now we are not playing the single ball, but it's a complete random process, a kind of random process. We are not absolutely sure when it's going to happen, but we inhale or we exhale. And then in the moment, the sound is there. We are following the sound and we are creating this movement of the torus form and we allow, not we allow, we see how the sound affects our intuitive movement of the body and the banding. I suggest even to do it, ah, oh, beautiful, right? And then now the thing is when it's still going on, you are not played again until you cannot hear it anymore. You want to really fade it out as much as possible because we imagine that our electrical field is 100 meters around it. We want to explore this space that is part of our natural being. Okay, and then, and then we can also have, have the upper side. Okay, let's go on. Uh, open your microphone and let's play together. And you only play it on the reverse point. And in between, you just take the sound the inspiration to have a very nice bending feeling with your rotating body. Ashish, you don't have a singing ball. Ah. <laughs> because if you, if you don't have a singing ball, very good for you, take the chance, you know, just and, and, and make it with the fingers because when you have a singing bowl, it means you have to work, right? And, and you can enjoy it more if the others are working for you. But take the sound and explore how, explore how, yeah, the flow. Just, and then the thing is, yes, exaggerate to the max. Okay, here we go for four minutes. Let's do it together. Very wonderful, very good. But now, we are keeping, let's keep on doing and let's realize one important moment. This is the moment when sound comes to its end. That will always be the moment when it ends. And this is very, very important because this gives you the idea of your, uh, let's say the tail of yourself or the beginning as, this, as however you say it. So you want to be very sure when the sound ends, that you have that sound bends your body into the fading out. So it is the possibility to change, to alter the condition of your body situation.
Samuel, one more gong for us. You want me to play? Yes, please. Okay, sorry, I didn't hear you. See, so now you can even on the Skype microphone, you can see how the wave come up. So even if you cannot really hear it, take it up and allow it to, to bend it. For all the time, you are invited to exaggerate to give your emotional setup a chance to be present. Do you get me? Okay, so, so okay, wonderful, one more. Take Samer and Ashes comes out with the guitar. I'm sure get a good chord. Okay, here we go. Nice. Okay, so let's even go a step further. Uh, we are definitely into it. So now, and at a certain time in the sound music, it is very important that you are able or you just to ignite your voice. And the voice usually happens when you exhale and you want it to be completely random. It's not a controlled process. You're not going to sing a certain mantra. You just allow your voice to... Like you modulate sounds. Like with as is... If you are doing it with anybody else and they think it's fancy, you say you're doing wind and waves. Okay, wind, wind, and water waves. Okay, show me some wind waves. Ashish, open your microphone. you to honor our amazing host the person who is doing all that for us today so when we keep on with our voice I invite you I kindly ask you to sing the wonderful word Anu Here we go Anu, 
Now something very important is happening. So we stay connected and we still hear the sound music of us playing and singing Anu. Can you still hear it? Your memory? Your mind? Yes? Yes. yes. It's yes. a very good sign. It means you're still yes. moving, right? Okay, so then you allow this memory to happen. And you stay in the same mood and you hear the sounds we did and now you take it all in and you focus in your heart and you give a very nice heartful blessing to Anu and now I have to think to look okay now something very important in integral sound music all the exercises they have to go with eyes open in sound meditation you always open your eyes this has electromagnetic uh, reasons yeah, because you want the gamma flashes, bong, 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 the upper octaves of what we are creating, that they, you want them in your system. Okay, so we are, we are getting this feeling, the memory, and we take it here in our most electrical point, and then we give it a focus with a decision. In the heart? Yes, in the heart, where, where you feel your heart space, because this is your most, and before we were like this collecting, Right, and now please everybody do it because I, you only get it from doing, you don't get it from listening. No more instrument, only instrument is the way. This is there's a protocol of how sound music works, okay? So I'm jumping a little bit, I'm sorry for that, but it's an intuitive program. So now we did the sound, and then we still hear it and we pick it up. Like so we so we are still have it inside ourselves. Now we are connected with the breathing and we take it very slow down. Slow down. Bina, eyes open. Okay. <laughs> eyes open. Very important. Eyes open. And in the moment you take it from the, from the feeling, from the atmosphere, the moment you take it in your heart space, you feel the difference. It's like electrical shock. Right? And you want this shock. Um, bang! You want to feel it. And if you don't really feel it, you exaggerate, then you pretend you feel it, right? Because you want to, it's about getting the body alive. No more boring bodies. Repeat after me. No more boring bodies. No, 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 no more boring, boring bodies. Only living bodies. Only living bodies. Only living bodies. No more boring bodies. I am a living body, right? You know, I'm a living body. I'm a living body. And I love it. And I love it. And I love it. Yes, yes. I love and, it. And I want to share it. <laughs> and I want to share it. I want to share yes. it. Now and it's I a terror time. I only can share with myself. I can only share yeah. with myself. But, no, it's oh, well, when terror time is myself. over, then I will be in the world sharing, you know? Okay, so in the world sharing. if you do yes. this with, the, with your electrical ignition, if you're ignited, everything will be very nice. And when you say, okay, I am done. Well, so we had here, I got it, we got off the track. So we take it here to the heart, then we share it. And when the sharing is done, then it's the protocol. And also then we take our hands back and then we have a moment of silence. And even in this silence, we have the eyes open to be with ourselves, but we do nothing. Silence, nothing. So this is the final integration of any sound music procedure. And, um, so, and then when the silence is done, then with next inhale, now another part of the protocol, very important part. We inhale, we have the hands on our body, and then when we exhale, we go on with our massage. 
right? Sound music is about getting electricity, vivity mm -hmm. in your body, and at the end is the massage getting it so we really feel it. And this massage is very, very interesting now because through this process, what happens is sometimes, actually in many times, this, the, the vibrations, they were like opening up new spaces, new resonance areas in yourself. And it might look a little bit, well, it's normal, it's boring, we all do stretching. Yes, of course. But uh, if you do it on the purpose and if you allow your, your emotional setup to really take over, then it might be sustainable. And if you have a mallet, show me your mallet when you have it. You have your mallet. So, so then also you can do like this. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is, and and you can even see on the back. You can get to points. Oh, I love it. And this is even if it's just yourself on the quarantine, you know. And if you do this all the way, then you you win. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And this is much, 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 of course, you can also do with your hands, but this has the purpose, right? You can really see, oh. Yeah, you can get to fancy parts of yourself. <laughs> yes, well, so what we did now is basically a, it, it was an example for a um, sound music interaction and you did very, very well. And uh, uh, it's, it's really kind of surreal of course, because we are like, you know, like spread all over the world and, and well, we can do sound together somehow. And we might, might be that uh, if we want to improve that, we have to check out for, I don't know, microphones and sound cards, you know, do all this stuff, get all this stuff ready so we can perform better. But the idea, I think, well, I hope it's, it's I, I was able to uh, transport the idea of integral sound music and you are invited to ask, uh, invite, you are uh, invited to ask some questions, please. And Anu is going to moderate whose question we are going to consider. Okay, uh, so guys, you have any questions right now? Okay, Priyanka, please go ahead. Unmute yourself and please. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, Yen, thank you so much for being here. It's so nice to see you once again. I am very, very can you happy. Hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. And, um, and, and I think you are the one, you are on the meta level, you made all this possible, right? Because without you, it wouldn't be possible. <laughs> Am I, am I right? Thank Anu? you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, thank you very, very much, Priyanka. I'm very, very happy. Absolutely. Uh, any other questions? Jan, are you good? can you play for us for a little while? Just like five minutes or three minutes or something. Oh, sure. Yeah, thank you. That would be really nice. Okay. I think people are really waiting to hear something, um, <laughs> some music from you. Yeah, uh, they, that would be well, lovely. I'm so much in gratitude. Thank you.
Can't hear him. Can't hear you. No, I can. This. There are some instruments that don't really actually make uh, sounds that you can hear. This is like I collect instruments from all over and this is an instrument is not really instrument but I take it as an instrument and I picked it up in, in, in Arizona and this is a, like a very special rattle. Yeah. Can you hear the microphone? And this means um, something to me a lot this means a lot to me because when i was in in arizona on my last journey going around the world and i found it's an amazing a place from its nature but i was missing one thing i was missing the uh, original people the natives and I found a lot of stress in the environment. And so I, the, I, I, I said, well, obviously it's a purpose that I am there. And we worked for two or even three weeks with sound music and um, while well, balancing the stress that was there and it somehow worked very well. And this is part of my job for many, many years. And uh, this sound music that we are doing is not just something entertaining or something funny. It is a very uh, effective and very serious tool to support the collective consciousness in times of really uh, trauma and stress. So I really in, uh, invite you to explore as much as possible doing sound music well and for the benefit of yourself for the benefit of your relatives of the people around you but also for the benefit of the environment around you and i can assure you once you start very uh, you will you will realize the resonance effect very easy very fast and uh, it's for a reason for a good reason that being a sound musician is a contemporary profession with a great perspective because a lot of good vibration is needed these days and um, I want to invite you to go for it because making sound music is more um, let's say effective if you would go and explain if you use your intellect it's very difficult to succeed. But if you have sound music, it is a very nice tool to integrate even someone with a different opinion. And this is the one, of, one of the hugest challenge that you know, it's very easy to uh, work with people who have the same consent. But uh, the challenge is to work with people that have no idea what you're doing. We have Dr. Manorama asking you a question. Dr. Manorama, please unmute yourself and others who want to ask a question, please raise your hands. Thank you. Yeah, hello, sir. It was an amazing experience. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, do you recommend using sound for uh, pregnant ladies? Is it recommended? Absolutely. It's one of, of I mean, let's be, uh, of course, it's, it depends on the way you do it. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, but for sure, I have had many, many. I cannot even count. I have many experiences 
with pregnant women coming to gong and sound meditations regularly. And I have even seen now, I have, I have seen some grown up or babies, kids that have been part of it. And it's just fantastic because it helps the mother a lot to set up an organic communication with the, with, their, with the upcoming child. And as well, it relaxes the body so a lot and it takes away whatever stress there is. It's very, very recommendable. Okay, because uh, I played uh, sound for a group of ladies. Uh, they were pregnant and they really enjoyed that. And the, they uh, told me that there is a uh, baby movement has increased. So that was a great experience for me also. Oh, yes. Yes. I Wonderful. This is a good experience and I recommend everybody to go for this experience. But of course, I, uh, you will always make things that make sense. You will not act beyond sense, right? Yes. Of course. Okay. Thank you so much. I thank you for this very good question. Thank you. Um, any other questions, guys? Let me... Uh... Yes, go ahead. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. I just want to ask if um, Jens, if, uh, if you are doing another session for integral sound music via Zoom another time, or is this just <laughs> one special moment? <laughs> we could well, arrange. We could arrange another one whenever he well, he's ready. I could do that. Not a problem. Would be great. Yeah. They um, well, they they are, well. The truth is at, as follows. I am more or less pretty much involved in uh, let's say supporting people doing it. And, and now when I got home from my world tour and being in, in our apartment, well, I have, I somehow, I have a lot of materials, but I never set it up because I'm so, somehow so busy in these times. But I, um, I definitely, uh, there will be more, uh, uh, let's say, but live music, like this talking is very special. And this I, use, this I only do for Anu, like talking about the things, this is only for you. Thank you. And, and because I are uh, as if I, I, I want to just talk to things that come my, up my mind and, and sometimes it's better when this is in private spaces, right? <laughs> but on Zoom and now it's on Facebook, this is public, it's not private anymore, but uh, I feel it's okay. But of course, I like to play music, uh, perform music. And uh, for example, we have our friend, from on, on, on Ibiza, they have yeah, some people who are already doing it. Let, let me see if he's in here. I could see, his, could, see his, could see his name. Konstantin was in for a moment. I'm not sure if he's in still, but he's doing it. He's doing a gong meditation every Wednesday evening, but I think in a time that's not appropriate for you. And uh, well, it should be more of this. And I'm just not sure which day is the good day. So, Bini, you can choose a day, and then this might be the day. So, Jan, since it's come up, would you do for us sound music one of the days, whenever you are ready? Anu, whenever you ask me something, I will do it for you. I will do whenever you uh, call me. I will be big warm hugs to you. Thank you. And Thank and you. yes, and um, there are some options for me to to um, to, to to work on the setup with my friends. So more microphones, use a sound card and, you know, get a little bit more fancy live. And there's a lot of to improve. Mm -hmm. Guys, any more questions? Can I ask a question? Please go ahead. Please go ahead, Bhavna. So, uh, Anu, as you're aware, I lost my brother uh, some months back. And uh, time and again, uh, the grief keeps coming in and I am not able to get over it. In fact, often lately, since the last one week, it's been coming in too much. So I wanted to know, I have a singing bowl. Is, it, is there any way that I could just play the singing bowl and uh, heal myself? I think um, Jans can answer that the best. Yes. Well, what, I, what I suggest is, what I suggest is that, that you mm -hmm. lie down on your bed and, and you place it on your, on your belly or even on your, on your, on your upper chest. And then, and then you will just play it, right? So, so, so that it resonates, and then you will find a spot where it feels particularly good. And okay. when you when you find a spot where it feels really good, which is probably the, uh, which is probably sometimes you're on the on the belly, uh, 
then you just go for it. You allow the grief to come up. You, you, you grieve as much as possible. Okay. And, and when it is, and then I, it is, it is like, so, and when it's, whatever it is, the one is there, it's like, it's a very personal, uh, definitely couldn't be any more personal, like to what helps so much is focusing on the, on the, on the exhaling. The exhaling is where the letting go is possible. Okay. And then when you inhale, then also you see, oh, there is, it's, it's coming again. And when it's coming again, you, you look at it. You allow it to happen. Inhale with the nose and really take in and use your hands and even go in the stories. And then you have the peak of the inhale, you exhale, and then you let it go again. So a sound wave has four departments. They all have a different, uh, let's say, value or a different function. And if you practice to use the four parts of a sound wave, then this will help very much to overcome uh, like these tremendous situation of being emotionally in stress because of, in this case, of, of grieving, uh, being in the disaster of uh, having somebody lost. So, yes, this is, and, and the sound gets it into the cells and the sound supports it. Okay. Thank you. So there are wonderful messages in chats and Nusil from South Africa, she is saying, this is wonderful and for a long time I've been waiting to learn and include sound healing into my practice. Intuitively, I feel so drawn to this. And many, 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 many messages on the chat. Um, anybody else feels like sharing, asking? If you felt it was great, share it, guys. If you felt you need to ask something, don't keep quiet. Ask the question. Very good. Hi. Of course, of course. Who's, who's that? Uh, this is Nutan, Dr. Nutan. Go, Go ahead, Nutan. Yeah, I just wanted to share uh, my experience. I could actually uh, feel or the, you know, the taste of dry cell in my mouth in the saliva. I don't know whether it resonates or not, but I could actually feel that. Okay. I didn't understand it. I'm sorry. She could feel the taste of. Uh, what was the taste of? Uh, it, we use the cells, right? Like dry cells in the remote or something. When we when we just touch the tip of it, you could feel the you could feel the uh, the iron or the electronic thing in your mouth. I could feel that. Mm. Okay, I think yeah, it is it is uh, it is amazing how how sensitive humans are, how sensitive we all are, and it is so amazing what happens when we uh, when we open up and just allow these these talents to to happen, and uh, this is this is yeah this is the evolutionary process that whatever we have inside of us we explore it and unfold it in our great creative doings. Mina, okay, thank you so bye. much. It was great experience. Thank you. Okay, uh, there is Arti. I will have who has a question. Oh. Arti, go ahead. I don't have a question. I just wanted to say hi and say that the experience was amazing. <laughs> hi, Jens. Hi, Alice. It was hi, nice Arti. seeing <laughs> and nice, nice again. experiencing again and going back to the memories that we had again. So I think I remember the first night when we came and you played. So the whole sound when you were playing it was getting getting me to that memory, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much. I thank you for being here. Glad to see you. I have a question, Jens. Yes, please, please go ahead. Jens, hello. This is Viba. Hello, Viba. Fantastic to see you. Yes, I I have no words. I'm very very happy to see you and Alex. Uh, my question is from a practitioner point of view. Uh, what I've noticed that uh, clients or attendees who come to the session, they invariably, they experience something beautiful, whether it is the singing bowls or the gong or together. Uh, sometimes I have noticed that I have a pattern of playing. It's not that I'm thinking it out, but it's 
how it happens. And sometimes that bothers me because I think then my exploration is limited. Would you have any advice for that? Or should I allow it to be? Or should I uh, force myself to change a little bit and then allow something to unfold? I didn't get the first word. What, what is it that is bothering you? You got a trigger? No, not a trigger. I feel sometimes I get into a pattern of playing. A uh, pattern. Okay. Yes. And it's not that I'm logically or an, analyzing and thinking and playing somewhere in that way, but it's become a pattern. Though the clients and the attendees are having beautiful experiences, a part of me is aware that I'm playing in a similar pattern. Yes. Okay, but the pattern within a session, right? Uh, no, in general, it's like my style, maybe. My st well, so, so as an exploration to to expand my understanding, my experience, and client experience, should I consciously try to change something, or should well, I just allow it to be? Well, definitely, definitely allow it to be. Like in sound music, doesn't mean it's all the time just let's say random you know noises or rhythms coming in there can be patterns and if you have a certain personality that might even be that that there is a realizable pattern in your way of doing it and uh, so when there is a process of sound music it's like if you have a pattern you can consider it as like a mantra like and the mantra you keep up repeating 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 and the more you repeat it the more intense uh, it is going to get so um, unless there is no, let's say, the, the, your, your repetition is not something that causes earthquakes, <laughs> no, you go on, right? And, and uh, what, what, what I suggest is that um, like in integral sound music, particularly for the practitioners, it is not about getting in a kind of a trance flow where you just do anything. It is like not at all. You are recommended to be just at the border edge of, let's say, realization, where, or let's say, as if you just about to fall in the state of dreaming, but you are just at the border. And this is where we learn to control, to be more and more accurate, just at the edge, at the border between, let's say, uh, what we can reflect and the unconscious part that comes there. Right. This is this, and the more we do it, the more we will, uh, uh, let's say, develop skills on that. And a very good way to train the skill is while you're doing it, when you're realizing it, that you slow down. You bring yourself into slow motion, and you keep on doing the pattern. You keep on following the pattern, but you do it in slow motion. And if you do this for a, through a couple of breathing circles, then you will even get into more details and you will get as access to even more different qualities in terms of resonating your body tension, which gives you more electrical strengths and makes the sound more valuable and, and you can get things done. Mm -hmm. We, okay. have a, we have another, that was a brilliant question, brilliant answer. We have another person, Gina. Thank from, you, Jens. Thank Gina. you, Viva. Go thank ahead, you. ask your question. Uh, thank you, Jens. I just want to ask, can anybody buy a Tibetan bowl and just play it? If anybody just can buy it? Buy it and play it. Yeah, 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 yeah. go ahead. It's better to have a bowl as have no ball. Yes, one have a ball is better than no ball. And, and, and there are so, so many uh, 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 examples like all over in social media and, and friends that will be happy to tell you. And I think uh, definitely uh, every house should have minimum, should have one bowl. Because one thing that you can do is uh, by now we are realizing that, uh, uh, that being multiversal, multi-level, being so sensitive, our personal space, our spaceship, our habitat, our temple is even, it's even more important to be sure that the vibrational energy, the setup in your home is stable. 
When you go somewhere, you come back home and, and it's just like conquered from so many energies. And it is not that energies are bad energies or good energies. Like, like this concept, we don't, uh, we're not using it anymore. Energy is energy. But there is supportive energy and there is like destructing energy, of course. And if you have a singing bowl and it's right here, and I really suggest if you have just one bowl, you place it where you would drop your key where, or where you would drop your shoes. Just, just drop it at very close to the entrance. And then whenever you come home, like you, you exhale and then you are aware, I am at home. This is my home. I live here. And so and then you, and then you just pick it up and you play it once. And then with the sound, you condition the sound. You make the sound be the amplifier of the vision of what you are. So, and then you come home and I'm here. This is my house. I live here. This is my vibration. And when you are, when you have the discipline to do it till the sound vanishes and then listening it is not just standing there like a marmor statue, but listening, going with the flow, then it might even be that it will direct you to any particular spot in your temple space where you think, okay, I need another one or you're, you, you pick up the energy that's there. We are, it's about training your sensitivity to interact, to communicate with the energetical setup around. And most of it, it's all about electrical, um, let's say, yeah, realities, even entities. And so a singing bowl helps very, very much to make your home really your home because this is like it amplifies the vision of what is yourself and if you have no idea then you still say your name and you say i ich jens das ist mein zuhause hier bin ich or i arno it's near here it's my home right and then if you don't want to deal with all the strange you know entities in the corner you stay there but it's my home right you know you rule you are the king you are it, you are the most important person Thank you. That was beautiful. We have Priyanka Patel asking a question and Shamla asking a question. So Priyanka, go ahead. Sorry, I just disconnected that time by mistake. It was a network issue. Not so, yeah, Jens, uh, you spoke about few um, sound practitioners earlier. Uh, one was Hans Posto, the cosmic octave, the one who introduced us to the planetary frequencies. I remember you spoke about somebody else as well. I did not get that name. And you also uh, mentioned you will share the PDFs which have been now translated in English. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so Hans Kusto is more like a scientist. He's not a sound practitioner. Yeah, so, sorry, sorry. He's no, no, a scientist. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, but so, so, so just to be clear, he is a scientist and, yeah. and, and he's still living. He's, he's quite old. And, but so this is the contemporary department of sphere harmonics. So we are living in an amazing time where great personalities are around and where we have this improvement of the knowledge. Pythagoras, he didn't know frequencies. He knew intervals and he, he understand he, he, the, the, the law of the octaves and the overtone, which is a very important part, the overtone harmonics. But the, yeah. the order frequencies are crystal. And the other name that I mentioned is or the name of Jean Gebser. And Jean Gebser, he colleague of C.G. Jung and I have um, one, one English PDF. I'm going to send it to Anu and then, sure. uh, and then you can get it from Anu uh, if you like and, uh, and, and then it, it's, it, it, it gives you some work and I would like to point out one thing that the word integral culture mm -hmm. has been used by an American author named Ken Wilber. Named Ken, Ken Wilber. Oh, excuse me, uh, it was coming. I'm still in the webinar. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry for that. Um, they, um, so, um, and Jean Gebser, he's very, very important because, well, I guess Ken Wilber did it. And for me, being a, a German minded, you know, it's, 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 it's not nice to be German minded because you have a sense, you like detailed precision. Right, and, and if it's getting weird, and then you say, well, let's discuss, okay? And the word integral 
culture sticks to Jean Gebser. And they have this American guy called Ken Wilber, and he's very quite popular, but, mm -hmm. uh, but, but this is not whom I'm referring to, right? And, and so this is where, where things are getting tricky. So we always have this kind of, uh, even in this holistic world, we have this kind of, let's say, gossip. He's doing this, <laughs> he's doing that, and look how he's doing this, and he's doing that. My God, why not? Okay, but the, the historical, and if you're a scientist on sound, then it is very, very clear. You have Pythagoras, you have Hans Kusto, and even Hans Kusto's work has been transferred into commercial departments in a way that we cannot even overlook it anymore. And some mm -hmm. people would present planetary frequencies, but they would not even say that they got the knowledge from Hans Kusto, which I think is not really fair and is not scientific because we have to be sure, or it's nice to be sure, uh, where information are coming from. So mm. the Jean Gebser is very nice. I will send the PDF to Anu, and, the, and you can um, share it or request from her. Sure. Thank you. Thank Wonderful. you Wonderful. So there is another question from Shamla from Delhi. Uh, Jans, do you want me to put you on the group? Or would you prefer not to be on the group? I can put you on the WhatsApp group and you could also interact with the whole group if you want to. Would you like that or would you like me not um, to put your name in? Well, well, I, 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 like, uh, I, I would like to do it very much. I'm very honored to be on, on, uh, on a group and I'm very honored and I do as much as possible to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, sometimes it, is, it just takes, it might take a day and now, and now everybody was saying, no, Jens, you need telegram and you need signal you know and then and then it's getting it just, it just got so much and and i do my best to answer every question and uh, so, so i would love to be in the group wonderful uh shamla please unmute yourself and ask the question and yes, others this uh, is the last chance guys ask your question yes shamla yes, go ahead uh, yes thank you so much sir it was a wonderful Very session wonderful. And uh, thank you, Anu, for making it possible. Um, it's just a sharing, basically. I use a singing bowl when I do my tarot card or maybe my angel reading or any any therapy that I do. And it really works very well. And singing bowl, basically, I use it to even cleanse the whole area or maybe the house or maybe the work area mm -hmm. it really is amazing thank you so much to you know uh, tell me more about it it was wonderful thank you so much thank you thank you very much thank, thank you. you any more questions guys okay Anya, can i quickly say something please go ahead Anya. Jens, thank you very much. It was wonderful. And I've been practicing all kinds of uh, different instruments and gongs and so on. And I do believe in it. And I think my neighbors think I'm crazy. <laughs> with uh, I get up in the morning and I start with my singing bowl. And, but I believe it has lots of energy and it helps in your house, like you said, to be grounded in your house and it's my house you know and uh, and I combine it a lot also with smell with uh, and all of that it belongs into that also to have essential oils and have the right smell and wow mm -hmm. and I'm quite happy about the corona uh, because <laughs> it gives me time at home to enjoy all of this <laughs> instead of running around outside. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Danke schön. Und ich komme nach Hamburg. Wow. Sehr gerne. Sehr gerne. You're welcome. Okay, yeah, so, so, um, so I, I, to yes. on, uh, one I, thing. Yes, sorry. The final thing. So, so, as Anja was mentioning, uh, adding on essential oils, and of course, everything is good. Uh, allow me to say one, one important thing. Please go ahead. If you, if you go into sound music, please be very sure that you have a frame drum as well. Because it's very important for your setup, your bioenergetical organic setup, to be able to run through with a rhythm. 
it can be uh, uh, anything like like the um, like this. so so like for example this is this this drum with uh, it's it's a little bit black but it has a dark skin uh, it's not so loud So this is not about playing ragas, but this is about playing the breathing wave and, and getting access to the to the reverse points. And if it's very important for everybody, for the body, everybody's body, that you have that you that you get the energy with the rhythm, that you get it on the ground, that you get it on the earth. If you play sound music and you do not play drum, you get very easy, you have the tendency to get some sort of dizzy. You will be very much in your, let's say, emotional fantasy. It's very important. People would call it the grounding. And I said it's something like that, yes. But the drumming, to do the drumming. And as well, uh, if you are the next step in sound music, it is not only you're enjoying it yourself, you're supposed to enjoy it with somebody else. Right, and, and, and then if you are, uh, if Anya walks around her house mm -hmm. playing both, and if somebody will also play, you know, you can easily imagine it's, it's, it will be more beautiful, right? And this is about, uh, it is, this is not about like getting uh, high or, or getting into kind of, yes, yeah, exactly high. This is about being very practical with your physical energies and enjoying yourself and when you can enjoy yourself then also you can enjoy somebody else and you can have fun together so uh, this is why you need a frame drum wow can i ask one question please go ahead so uh, is it possible to use sound therapy to, uh, therapy to lose weight <laughs> 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 I love. Yes, <laughs> you mean good. I mean like like you will. I'm if if you put your mind on this, you 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 can easily find a concept. If you use it to mot, if you will use sound to motivate your discipline setup, and um, everything is imaginable, right? But um, uh, uh, if you really want to use lay weight, I think uh, I would suggest to go into the uh, uh, physiological concepts of your body first. And there is lots and lots of knowledge out there today. And I think this is part of the new culture that people move from the believing into things more into the areas of knowing things. And if you are, if you want to know about body losing weight, there is a lot, 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 lot of uh, knowledge around. And the knowledge that we prefer these days is the, uh, the, the science of the omega fat acids. And this is something really, really spectacular out there. But I don't know, Anu, this is something else. I don't think we can go into that today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I thought, I thought I'd be get lucky getting an answer there. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, well, yeah. well if, you, if, you, if you just keep on dancing, you know, drumming and dancing, <laughs> and then everything will be very fine. Okay. Arti, you have a question. <laughs> Yes, I think everyone started discussing. So a question just popped up into my head. Uh, Jans, what would you say about the 528 frequency? Do they really exist? Are they really there? Because you're getting a lot of tuning forks with 528. Five, is, it, is, it, is this one solfeggio tuning forks? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. well, well, there is a lot of, there are many, many, many frequencies around. But we have to uh, realize that the... Uh, in the organic life, they're all going on at the same time, right? And sometimes it doesn't make sense to reduce, to just pick up one frequency, take it out of its context and just like promote it. This doesn't really make sense. Sometimes it makes sense to, particularly if you want to focus on a specific topic, then it might make sense to work with a frequency for a certain time, but uh, always look at the context and and, and, and use the other solfeggios as well, of course. Like, like we had this huge, huge issue with the 432 frequency, which got very, very popular. And it, it is a good frequency. And for those of you like, uh, uh, um, like from India, we have a big, big uh, 
chapter in the cosmic octave that deals with the vibration of the earth moving around the sun being an essential vibration uh, of the planet earth and the frequency of the earth circling around the sun is the fundamental of classical indian music so like it's a, it's a, it's the and and the the and if you take the frequency of the classical indian music and you take the fundamental a from that which is the 432 so so it's a good frequency but it is just one option because we, we have like we also have a fundamental that comes from the earth moving around itself the day we have the fundamental from its axis we have more important the fundamental of the moon so it's it's you know, we have a setup and if you are a professional practitioner the more you get into it the more frequencies you will get to realize and you will have experience with them okay perfect so it's it's recommended to use all the frequency if i'm using them yes yes absolutely perfect thank you so much you're welcome ati wonderful thank you so much and please wait right now don't go away we have a beautiful angel on the over here called benaifa who's going to read some cards for you and for alex today and thank you thank you thank you so much i cannot tell you how much in gratitude i am today i feel that somewhere you've completed me and my friends today thank you thank you so much thank you thank so you. much um so benaifa over to you and uh, let's read cards for alex and yans both of them so yans and his partner alex so first for yans and then for his partner alex thank you hello yan thank you so much for the lovely session really amazing thank you uh, so i picked up two angel cards for you the first uh, can you hear me yes yeah uh, the first is archangel michael who saying you are a powerful loving and creative child of god you are very loved <laughs> and uh, the second card is archangel jeremiah who is saying the worst is now behind you and you are surmounting any previous challenges wow thank you so now for his partner For you, I have got Angel Rai, who is saying yoga and exercise are essential to your well-being, peace of mind, and spiritual growth right now. And the second card I got is again Archangel Michael, but with a different message, saying that I am protecting you against lower energies and guarding you, your loved ones, and hope. Wow. Okay. Thank so you let's so let's do reading today for Lucille, for Priyanka, uh, for Doctor Quizzy, for Anya. So we started Lucille. Thank okay. you. uh before i forget tomorrow one session is in the morning from australia at 2 o'clock and the e in the in the evening at about 9:30 we have three speakers speaking it's called the crunchy talk and so that will be really really interesting and in the morning we have krista who's going to be there with us from melbourne so that's going to be really interesting she's going to uh, show us how to expand ourselves completely in this restrictive times thank you for you i have picked up two cards the first one is angel bethany who says when you take excellent care of yourself everybody benefits give yourself a relaxing treat today such as a massage piece or bath or pedicure so 
the basic message over here is you're not looking after yourself so please start and thank you uh, the other one is angel zion who saying you have a special bond with animals your pets on earth and in heaven are watched over by angels ah uh, thank you <laughs> And I, and interestingly enough, I I have started doing animal communication. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Most welcome. Next is Priyanka. Second reading, huh? Lucky, you're lucky. <laughs> Anu, thanks to you. We are all together, so, totally. The first card for you, Priyanka, is Angel Opal, who is saying mm -hmm. your children on earth and in heaven are happy and well cared for by God and the angels. Okay. The second one is uh, Archangel Michael, who is saying you are a powerful, loving, and creative child of God. You are very loved. <laughs> wow! Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And who was the Doctor Crazy? Doctor Crazy and Anya. Anya. And I would actually read for my new friend, but I don't know what her name is. V I N E. I just. So I don't know what her name is. I can't see it properly. Um, it's B I N E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll read for her also. First for Doctor Crazy, then for Anya, then for B I N E. Bine. Bean. Bean. Okay. Bean. Okay. See. Doctor oh, we, we start with the basics wrong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> yes. Uh, Dr. Kwesi, I uh, picked up two cards for you. The first one is Angel Indrayal, who is saying you are a light worker. God needs you to shine your divine light and love like an angel upon the earth and all of its inhabitants. But you're already doing that. So the angels are telling you. The second message is um, Archangel Ariel, who is saying be courageous and stand up for your belief. Thank you very much. Let's go to Anya. Anya? Anya, are you there? Yes. Yes, hi. <laughs> So, uh, you have also got Archangel Michael, who is saying, I'm with you, giving you the courage to make life changes that will help you work on your divine life purpose. Thank you. And the second one is Archangel Uriel, who is saying, yes, your idea is divinely guided. Please take action to bring your idea to fruition. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Okay. And uh, Benny, Benny. Benny is nice. Well. Benny. <laughs> Benny is, I, I am called Benny, so now this is B E, but mine is B I. <laughs> is, is, uh, Do you have a question? Benny there? Yes, she's okay. there very much. Smiling away to glory. <laughs> okay. Can you see your face? Can you just say something for you pop up on the screen, please? Yeah, it's me. I am Bina. Bina. <laughs> okay. okay. Should I still say something? It's so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're just great. Thanks so much. Unbelievable. Really. So, My heart um, is shining. <laughs> I've picked up two cards for you. The first is Angel Kelsetta who's saying, what do you desire right now? Visualize it and it will come about. Negativity will block your progress. OK. 
Okay. And the second one is Angel Patience, who is saying, now is the time to learn, study, and gather information. Enjoy being a student, because in the future, you will synthesize your knowledge into action. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Now for the, for the whole group, and that's where we'll close the session down. For the whole group is Angel Ariel, who is saying new psychic and spiritual experiences are changing the way you view the world and yourself. Allow your spiritual gifts to open through study, prayer, and meditation. And uh, the second card is Archangel Haniel, who is saying you are extra sensitive to energies and emotions right now. Honor yourself and your feelings. Very nice. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you, everybody. We meet again tomorrow. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Alex. We meet tomorrow again at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and again in the evening at 9.30. And thank you, everybody. Thank you, angels. Thank you, everyone on this group. I am so, so, so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anu. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. I'm just going to stop the recording and then play the song.